Hello again, welcome to another video going over the basics of Lua and Dual Universe. Today we're going to set up a lock break feature on our ship. We're going to do it on this ship that we were working on previously. And we're going to go in, we're going to set up a few filters so we can lock our brakes, meaning we don't have to hold the control key to keep our brakes engaged. I'm sure you can see why this would be beneficial um, when you're landing from a high altitude or when you're coming in at 29,000 kilometers per hour um, in space and you don't want to sit there holding your control key. You can lock your brakes so they'll just remain locked until it stops. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to do is go into our control chair. So we're going to press control L and this brings us into the Lua console. To start, let's go into our system on the left and we're going to need to add to our system start filter. Now there's already a default one uh, from the auto configuration. Uh, I don't want to use that because I want to keep it separate for what we're adding to this, but you can definitely go in here and add it if you want to just have one uh, start filter. So let's go ahead. We're going to add a filter. We're going to change this to a start filter. And we're going to create a name for, for this, and we're going to call it Lock Break. So Lock Break. And we have to tell it what it's going to do, you know, what state it's going to be in true or false when the ship starts, when you sit in the seat. So we're going to say it starts out false because we don't want to start out with the brakes engaged. If you do, you can set that to true. Uh, but let's go with false for this. And then we have to create a key to toggle this on or off. So... Actually, let's do that last. Let's first go into our flush filter next because this tells us, okay, what's going to happen when the ship starts? Now we have to have one that's constantly running as you're in the ship that's checking against this. Um, so we could use, actually, let's do that. Let's use the flush filter we created last time. And we're just going to make a little note here to separate it. Uh, you don't have to add that. I'm just putting in there for separation purposes. And then I'm going to tag this. So I'm going to just call it lock break. Again, you don't have to add that. Any of these, uh, these notes here, not necessary. I just kind of add them as I go so I can easily reference them. And now let's write. We're going to put if lock break, then break input equals one and okay so now you might be wondering where we got this break input so we created lock break where did we get break input so let's go look at this is where the default filters and looking at those comes in really handy so break this lets us know break input so this is telling us that this exists for, for controlling the break input. Uh, one means engaged, zero means disengaged. So let's go back to our flush. We have if lock break, then break input equals one end. So this is letting us know if this is true, then break input equals one. So then engage the break input. But we need a toggle for that. So that's where our filter for the action start keys are going to be so let's add one more filter for this and we're going to add an action start so now with these action starts we have to choose which key we're going to utilize here um, for this because most of these are already taken up i don't want to mess with those i'm going to go down to the option keys and on a windows keyboard which is probably what we're all using option one is alt one option two is alt two um, i use option four or alt four for my lock break so i'm going to use that but you can pick any one you want so we selected that now we got to add the code here so we're going to put lock break equals not lock break 
Now what that means is, you have to remember, we set it up to start as false. So when we enable it, we want it to be true. So not false equals true. And then we're going to add break input equals zero. The reason for that second line is to zero it out and turn it off. So when you toggle it back off, it doesn't get stuck where your break input is stuck on. Um, or your lock break is stuck on. So that's it. Super simple. Uh, let's test this out. So let's jump in our chair. All right, let's go into third person. Let's take off. Let's turn on our trajectory line so we can kind of see what's happening. And let's get a little bit of altitude. Alright, and I'm going to turn my engines off and hit Alt 4. As you can see, the brakes are now on. I'm not holding control. If you look on the right under braking, you'll see the brake values there. And I'll turn that off, Alt 4. Now you can see it zeroed out, no brakes. And I'm going to hold it again, or press it again, Alt 4. And now it is stuck on. And a nice smooth landing. And in the next video or two, I'm going to show you how to make a HUD to toggle that. Um, the HUD will just show you that it's toggled on. Um, so that'll be cool. And then we'll look at toggling some engines on and off and putting those on the HUD. Um, so yeah, some really cool stuff coming up. Alright, that's it for now. Fly safe. Or don't. Your call.